if you are an African and you want to join the ESL industry, please do not compare yourself to South Africans. Hi, my name is Mr. Austin the Garvin Soprano. Yes, please, I'm an English teacher here in Thailand. And please do not compare yourself to South Africans because South Africans are treated differently in the ESL industry. What do I mean? South Africans are considered native English speaker. Listen. Native English speaker in this case doesn't mean that they're better than other African countries when it comes to speaking English. A lot of other Africans speak better English than South Africans, just as South Africans uh, would speak better English than other African countries. However, it is how the system has been designed. Please don't compare yourself to them because you will get disappointed. There are already government programs that are set up in South Africa or that are set up for South Africans to go to those countries to teach. I know China and Japan, I mean in South Korea and Japan as well, yes, they do have programs that are set up within South Africa by the governments to look for teachers to go there to teach English. So if I am from Botswana and I want to compare myself to them, I would be very disappointed because there, will, there are no programs like that. People are people in governments are looking for South Africans to go teach in their country, South Korea, China, and Japan and other places. However, I don't have anyone looking for me. I have to go out and look for them so that I join the industry. So please, if you want to join the industry, don't do that. And another reason, you know, yes, South Africans are considered native, like I said, Please don't waste your time trying to fight the system because that is how it has been designed. And the salaries are going to be different from what we are getting. Don't get it wrong. You can match the salaries or you can even get more than what the, uh, the other South Africans are getting. This is a white man's industry. I always say that we as black Africans are forcing ourselves in an industry where it is not our industry, even though we speak the language that, that they are looking for, but they're not looking for us. They are looking for white people. And which African country has more white people? South Africa. And of course, more white people that speak um, uh, English? South Africa. Yes, you are going to come with, uh, there are going to be a lot of debates about how other white people can speak uh, English just as much as other Africans also cannot speak English. That is not up for debate. You will be wasting your time. There is already a debate in the ESL industry that if you join, you're going to hear non-native English speakers and English speakers, I mean, native English speakers going back and forth with this. So how can you go about, you know, trying to improve your chances to get you into the industry? Yes, look for Africa. <laughs> Look for places that are accommodating for Africans, like your Southeast Asia, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam. They are open to other African countries. I worked in Vietnam and I've seen uh, 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 Nigerians there. On TikTok, there's a Nigerian who works there that I sometimes see her videos. I work in Thailand. There's a Mozana in Cambodia. There are people in Taiwan that are Botswana. There's a Mozana in Japan. So it is very possible for us to get into the industry. If you you are a first timer it is very important to look for a place that will you know set foot in so that you understand the industry how you can go about things so that you can go into those other markets i am i'm pretty sure that if you are experienced in a field you would be able to negotiate uh, better you also find strategies of applying here's a trick that i usually use when i look for jobs i call the employers before i send in my application or maybe after i send i send the application i call back to check if they confirm uh, my application my calling is to show them that hey actually i can speak english i've got a neutral accent and this uh you know showing them my skills that is one thing that i use to get into like you know maybe the interview so that they realize that you know what this person speaks really well i think also the reason why i successfully passed my south korea application i mean yeah job application job interviews is because i spoke really well and only at the, at the last stages that that's when they realized that oh he's not from the seven countries that we are looking for the seven native english countries are your the united states of america canada the uk ireland new zealand australia and south africa the rest of the other people are considered non-native english speaker that's that's not that that i mean this includes if you are an african who grew up maybe in america you went to america when you were two now you are 29 you still hold an uh an african pass one of the african passport that is not south african you are considered non-native english speaker if you are Botswana, you lived in the uk for 20 years and then you still hold a Botswana passport you are considered a non-native english speaker so don't compare yourself uh, to South Africans. The benefits that they get in the flights, the accommodation, the 
salaries that are bumped up, they are going to be different. But once you get into the industry, you're going to enjoy these things. I'm currently here in Thailand. I'm even shocked as well. I get an allowance. I get an allowance on top of my salary, which means like... <laughs> You, these are the benefits that I did not see coming because I'm used to not getting those benefits. But now because I've been in the industry for a while and I'm, I'm well experienced, I have those benefits. Does this mean that you cannot be in South Korea or China? No, you can be. However, you will have to take yourself there, find employers that are willing to sponsor you in different types of visas. Like for example, back in the day, um, it was uh, Thailand was very, very strict. But here, if you're considered non-native English speaker, for you to get a work visa, you, you need to get a test. This test is called a TOEIC test. It's an English test that uh, the ministry is looking for. So that is another way that you can get um, a work visa. But English speak, native English speakers, they don't need that test. So I guess maybe in places like Korea, Japan, uh, they there might be some ways that you can end up getting the visa. So you have to take yourself there, go and look for the jobs and the likes. So this is what I wanted to share. Thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.